Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am, I'm pumped. Okay. I'm going to be reviewing the ABH Norvina Collection Pro Pigment Palette Volume 5. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this palette, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And I have collected, oh, this, you're gonna have to ignore this. This is gonna fall down a lot probably in today's video. <laughs> okay, back to business. I've been collecting the ABH Norvina collection palettes. And while I will admit, she definitely came in a little too hard with these big palettes, way too many at once. I really like them. I have always really liked the quality of them. I've always liked the premise behind them. So Norvina took a chill pill, okay? She slowed down the releases on these. So after a year, she came out with volume five and it was the right time. I was pumped for this. I absolutely had to pick this one up. So let's go over the major details of this guy first. So this is $60, you know, I think that cheap, but you are getting 25 shades. This is currently available on the Sephora website and the ABH website. I picked this up from the ABH website because it launched there first. Well, wherever you want to get it, get it if you want it. So they do say online that this is called the Lilac Colored Palette. So it is a lilac palette. I didn't know they had names, but okay, we will take it. It does not seem to specify whether or not this will be limited edition, but who knows what is and isn't anymore. But this is a professional grade artistry palette featuring 25 deluxe size, high performance, high pigment shades with a gorgeous lilac color story. So let's take a look at the packaging. It's the same packaging as the other Norvina collection palettes, but obviously it has a little bit of a different design. Very definitely something that looks very attractive to me. It is vegan, cruelty-free, 12-month shelf life, and it is made in the PRC. Now the regular 12 pm palettes are normally made in the USA, but all of these ABH Norvina palettes have seemed to be made in the PRC. I will say normally when companies have their palettes made in the USA or Italy or wherever, and then they'll shift to the PRC. I noticed a change in quality with the ABH Norvina collection palettes. I, I swear the, the quality is a little bit better normally. Odd, but I'll take it. Anyways, you open up the palette. It is a magnetic closure. You have a big giant mirror and I love how this kind of stays up on its own. It's very easy and convenient to use as a real mirror actually for your makeup. And then you're going to reveal the 25 shades. As per usual, they do not have names, which I much prefer if I'm being honest. It's just easier to say the shade names and you have different kind of textures ranging from matte to shimmer to glitter to really, really sparkly shades. I don't know, so many of you guys message me on Instagram and you were like, this palette was made for you, Morgan. And I'm just thinking like, yes, yes it is. Like I knew I had to have this because if you're new to my channel, I love purples, specifically a good cool toned purple palette and Norvina delivered with this. Now Norvina is known for loving purple shades, but she really outdid herself. She's thrown a lot of purple shades in a lot of her palettes, especially in these big palettes, but there's never been like a purple color story. This is a palette that I feel like has a true purple color story and I just think it's very thoughtfully done. There's no weird pops. A lot of times in her big palettes, I feel as though these palettes have weird pops. There really isn't a cohesion to the palette itself. This is the first palette where I can really feel like there's an inspiration and there's a purpose behind this palette and I love these colors personally. This is a palette when I looked at it I knew it was a color story that was for me and you might look at this and think the complete opposite but just know I'm coming from a stance of I love the colors in here. If you're curious about how this palette compares to the other palettes at the end of my review, I will have a comparison section. So yeah, it will also be linked down below if you need it. I have played with this palette before, so I do have some experience with it. I had a couple weddings this weekend, so I just played with this palette to get ready. So the first look I did was this look. It's a little bit more wearable-ish. I didn't play with too many colors. I just wanted to throw it on. I wanted a look that was gonna look good without false lashes. And then I did another look this morning, a little bit 
bit more wham bam. Still, I wanted to keep it without some false lashes. So I have had some experience with this palette and so far, so good. But there are some other things that I do wanna test out that I'm going to be talking about today. So let's get into it. I'm gonna zoom us in. <clears throat> One thing immediately that I noticed with this palette, when I was blending the purples in my crease, it wasn't the easiest to work with. I definitely had to spend a little extra time blending it out to get a seamless look. I used Urban Decay Primer Potion both times as a base for that. So today I'm gonna try concealer as a base to see if that makes any sort of difference because like I said, it wasn't the easiest to blend out those matte purple shades. And I wasn't surprised by that because matte purples, I mean, they're tough to work with. If you're familiar, this brush, what? Why did I think I would be successful with that? If you're at all familiar with purple shades, and trust me, I've been around the block when it comes to purples. <laughs> purples are really tough to formulate, and normally, you know, when you sign up to wear purple eyeshadow, sometimes you just gotta know it's gonna be a little bit more work than a brown shade or something that's easier to formulate. So I'm using e.l.f. Chemo Concealer. I'm just gonna put that down. This dries down, almost feeling powdery, so it's not as sticky feeling as the Urban Decay Primer Potion. So we will see. I'm gonna do two different looks on two different eyes just to be able to get more looks in because there are so many colors in this palette. Mm. This palette inspires me. I just, I see so many different looks that I want to create. I'm brainstorming right now. I think I want to do looks with colors that I haven't used yet. I want to talk about a few of the colors that I've used. This shade, absolutely stunning. This is in the look that I wore earlier today. This shade is really beautiful. It has a strong pink shift that you actually don't see in the pan. So even though this looks more neutral, it still plays in with this pinky purple kind of vibe here. Now I've played with like these shades. One, two, three... And then this one right here, these are the ones that I was like, mm, about the blending. So I wanna try it with a different base. But I've been very impressed so far with all the shades that I've tried. Today, I definitely wanna use this one on this side, but actually first I'm gonna do a smoky eye. I'll do a smoky eye on this one. Oh no, I don't know. Okay, let's start off with our base shade. I'm gonna take some of A4. I'm using an Esum B34 brush for this. We're gonna test and see that this is as difficult as I thought it was to blend out. Um, No, it doesn't seem to be. All right. Already, we're doing better. I think that primer potion just made the purple stick a little bit too much and it was harder to work out. So I'm already liking this concealer base since it's set and it looks super nice. Okay, there we go. That solves that. Just be thoughtful of what base you use. Let's deepen it up with a little bit of D4 right here. This is a tough color to formulate. So we're just gonna give it a go. Oh, it's something that I forgot to mention, and this is kind of a big deal for some of you guys. A number of these shades are pressed pigments, so technically they are not deemed eye safe. Not all of them, but there is, there's a few of them. Now, this is not new to the industry or these palettes, I do not have sensitive eyes. So normally I'm unaffected by this. The products still work fine on me without irritation. But if you're sensitive to like red and purple pigments, then this is not the palette for you because it's called a pro pigment palette because they are pressed pigments and not eyeshadows. I would say though, unless you have those sensitivities, you'll be fine. <laughs> I personally would stay away from the pressed glitter. I'm always a little bit wary about pressed glitters. And there is one pressed glitter in here, which is stunning, by the way. But I'm personally not going to put that on my eyelid. But that's just personal choice. Do what you want. And this shade is blending out really pretty. Wow. Do you see that? It's not overly pigmented either, which I really like. I did use, I think, this shade, or at least a shade kind of similar to this earlier today. And it did leave slight staining behind. So just be aware, you might have a little bit of pink eye happening. Not real pink eye, like a stained pink eye happening after you use purple shades like this, which is completely normal. We are gonna go into some more depth. We're gonna use some of C5. I used, I believe, E5 as a liner today and it worked fabuloso. So let's try C5. And I'm just gonna pop this very gently out here here to give us some smokiness. 
even a little bit in here. See how nice this is blending? Oh my gosh. I don't know what it is about these Norvina collection palettes, but they are always so bomb. I love the formulation she has for these. No, I feel like people aren't normally thrilled with these palettes, but I swear they have amazing <laughs> quality. Norvina 4 kind of failed on the quality for me, but this palette seems to be back in business. Let me put just a little bit of that deep shade C5 right down here on the lower lash line. Pretty, okay. <sighs> I want to try out D3 right here. It's like a sparkly shade. It almost has like a matte base to it, but like with some intense purple sparkles. We're just gonna put that all over the lid. Ah, yes. Oh my goodness, I love this palette. I feel like there's so many different directions you can go with looks that I want to create and I want to wear. A palette that inspires me is always super exciting because there aren't a lot nowadays that do. Oh yes, you can see, we're using these intense shades. Little to no fallout. I've also been wanting to play with A3 and E3. I haven't played with these yet. Let me show you them. Here's E3. Now A3 swatched a little bit softer than what I was hoping. But this E3, look at this metallic goddess over here. Oh my gosh. E3 is like liquid metal. Whoa. I'm gonna show you A3. Makes A3 look boring. But they're both very pretty. I'm gonna take that lighter shade A3 and we're gonna use that as an inner corner color. But that E3 shade... What can I do with that? Where can I place that? We're gonna see if we can use that. But I also really like how pretty this sparkly shade is right here. It's got like a strong gold shift. I use this as an inner corner color and really beautiful. It has some intense sparkles in here. So what I love about this palette is the way that they play with the textures. Some of them are just so sparkly. I feel like for me to do this palette justice, I need to do a 10 looks one palette video. I will not be doing that. My poor eyes would not be able to handle that. I feel very inspired by this if you can't tell. Okay, we're gonna move on to the other eye. We're gonna create a different look. Then I'll do a big reveal with the lashes afterwards. There's so many colors that deserve to be played with. I just don't know. Okay, concealer is on. We're gonna start off with B2 right here. I have not used this shade. It has a little bit of pinkiness to it. Oh, do you see how pigmented that is? Love it. This shade is definitely gonna stain your eyelid. So just, you know, if you have an event that you're going to the next day where you're not wearing makeup, <laughs> just be mindful of that because you'll be pink and you'll look like you're sick. It won't be a cute look. <gasps> so pretty though. Because I can't help myself, I just, I have to use this lilac shade right next to it. This one I've already used and I was so impressed with the opacity that it gave my lid. And a lot of times with this type of shade, you'll notice wear time is bad. Not with this shade, it lasted all day. I wore all day to work and the vibrancy was insane. Uh, do you see that? This is with a blending brush. I didn't even pack it on. Whatever factory Arvina uses for these palettes, I hope she continues creating shadows from them because they just create such a good formula. This is like 20 minutes of me talking about how much I love this palette. I do want to add some depth now. I'm gonna do a true purple look. Let's take some of C3 and this is going to give us some depth here. Nothing too crazy because I already have a smoky eye on my other eye. See, I could put a silver on this lid and it would look super pretty for a nice contrast. And the silver, by the way, this is C2 in the palette. Look how pretty that is. Mm, so many choices. No, but I want to use E3 because look at this. That's that liquid metal shade. Uh, just comes right on my finger. Oh my goodness, yes. She's just as pretty on the eyelid. Let's give a try to E1 because this is a, like a light pinky shade that I've been wanting to try. The sun came out and now it's too bright in my room. Ooh, this is pretty. This is gonna be a really great color to go with a lot of different looks in this palette. So cute, okay. We're gonna take some of C3, put that out here, definition. I'm gonna take some of E3, put it right on the inner half of the lower lash line. And then finally, we're gonna take B1, which has a strong gold shift to it. I know the lighting is making it look white, but it has gold in it. I'm just gonna put that right here, right here. This one has some sparkles to it. Two very different, gorgeous purple looks that are semi-wearable. I'm gonna put on some liner and lashes and do the big reveal for you. Okay, I'm back. Here are the looks with some lashes. I'm gonna like cover it so you can kind of see. Here is the smoky eye that was so easy and quick to do. Everything blended great, no fallout, which is a big one. Definitely looked like it took more time than it actually did. And here is our more open-eyed purple 
look. Lilac look, I guess, is a better way to describe it. I love it. You'll see I went with a lighter liner in the waterline just to open up my eyes even more. Two opposite looks here. You can definitely see the difference of what a dark look does compared to a light look. But anyways, let me kind of round things up here. If you couldn't catch my vibe, I'm really into this palette. I think it is absolutely stunning. The quality is superb. I really haven't had any problems with any of the shades here. I would say maybe. And this is me really being nitpicky. I would like to see more formulas like E3 in the shimmers, just so metallic and wet and creamy because there's some that aren't as creamy, but they're still gorgeous on the eyelid. So I don't even know if that's a bad thing, uh, but I just love how many different textures there are in this palette, how many different depths there are in this palette. I could argue that there are a few redundant shades. Like I don't think these two were necessary. I don't think all of these mid-tone purples were necessary, but I don't care. I really love this palette. I think regardless, it's a great, value the quality that you're getting the amount of shades that you're getting for $60 of all the big Norvina collection palettes this is easily my favorite because it's the most cohesive story that she's ever come out with and it's like my kind of color story as well these are colors that I would wear and none of the big Norvina palettes are wearable all of them <laughs> seem to contain so many different vibrant neon colors and just all over the spectrum they're not wearable this is easily the most wearable but it depends who you are of course because if you look at it I mean it's it's not a neutral palette by any means but I think you know in terms of being wearable this is the most wearable and for me because I'm so comfortable in purple tones I, I find it to be very easy to create an everyday look with this as long as you're into those kind of tones and I think just the overall curation of this color story getting more into it is perfect because even the non-purple tones complement purple tones. All of these shades work together cohesively, but they're still so different, which allows you to create so many different looks. So I just think I'm gonna have so much fun with this palette. And I really think you guys will too, if you like purple shadows. So if you're a fan of purple shadows, I think this is one that is definitely worthy of being added to your collection. In fact, like I'm recommending it and I'm telling you, you should probably get this <laughs> if you like purple palettes. It's really, really nice. I don't think you'll regret it. I have always liked her Norvina collection palettes and this one did not disappoint. If anything, it's almost elevated. It's almost better. So that should tell you something. Now, as far as comparisons and how this palette compares to the other palettes in the ABH line, we're gonna get into that section. I wanted to do a comparison between the Norvina 5 and the OG Norvina palette. This is part of their regular line. You can pause this and take a look if you need to, if you really want to compare the shades, but I'm gonna show you them on my arms right now. So this top row up here, sorry if it gets out of focus, is the Norvina volume volume 5 and the bottom is the original Norvina palette. So I put the colors that I thought maybe had some similarities to the Norvina 5 colors down here and the colors on top are the colors that I thought could have been close and to be honest there really isn't a very close shade match. The closest are going to be this is eccentric in the Norvina palette and there's this one terracotta brown orange shade. Okay I'm out of focus that is in the Norvina 5 palette, but it's such a versatile color, I'm not even mad. They are very close to each other. The rest of the shades, I would say, are pretty far off, so you can definitely have both of those palettes. You can pause here if you want to see shade-to-shade -shade comparisons between the Volume 5 and the ABH Norvina Pro Pigment Volume 1, so this is the first big palette to come out. And these, you can see those pops of purples look extremely similar. Obviously, there's a lot more warm pop in the volume one. It's a different color story all around. Whereas, you know, the Norvina volume five, much more cool tone, definitely more in a true color family, a little bit less sporadic, which I like. But let me show you what colors are close. So once again, the top row is the Norvina five. The bottom row is the Norvina volume one. And obviously you can see there's matte whites in both palettes, which I don't mind, but really not as many similarities as I thought. What's going to be similar? Are there a lot of these mid-tone to deep-toned purples that are matte, that are very similar, and they're going to translate very similar on the eyes. So if you are only interested in the volume five for those matte mid-tone to deep-toned purples, you already have them in the volume one. 
you do not need both. But really, other than the mid-tone purples, which are, there are quite a few in both palettes, everything else seems pretty different. I didn't find too many dupe for dupes other than you can see all of these purples. All six of them, honestly, kind of look very, very close to each other. So unless the dark purples are what you're after, I think you're fine between both. Now we are going to compare Volume 5 to the most recent launch before this one. This came out last year. This is the Volume 4. And these two were the ones that I was most curious about how they would compare side by side because by looking I feel like I see so many similar shades. So let's take a closer look. Once again volume 5 is on top, volume 4 is on the bottom and this palette by far had the most similarities to volume 5 out of all of them. So if you really aren't into repetitive tones then if you have the volume 4 I don't think you need the volume 5. That being said though there's definitely a lot of similar shades as you can see on my arm. Overall, I prefer the color story of volume 5. I feel like volume 5 is almost the improved version of volume 4. Volume 4 was the palette that I didn't like the most out of all of them and I feel like volume 5 came to replace volume 4 because it has a very similar color story. Obviously volume 4 is, has more pops of pinks and warm tones that the volume 5 doesn't have, which I love. I love that volume 5 sticks to one color story, but as far as swatch to swatch comparisons, you can judge this for yourself but there definitely are a higher number of similar tones between these two compared to all of the rest all right you guys that is all i have for today's video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful obviously i love this palette i really don't have anything bad to say i think it's a perfect palette so thank you guys so much for watching if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i will see you all in the next one bye guys have a good one